Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. My name is Linda Bond and I am a resident scholar at the Brandeis Women's Studies Research Center. It's nice to connect with you and to introduce you to my work, especially at a time when we're all experiencing separation and isolation. I'm pretty fortunate to have a studio attached to my home, so I find it to be a consistent place uh, of refuge and joy and a place where I can work and find some silence in the midst of what's going on. So maybe we'll begin with a, a little quick look around the space, which uh, this meeting has inspired me to tidy up a bit. But uh, you'll see a variety of things. Um, the walls contain finished work, work that's in process, some things that are well resolved, other things that are still, I'm still thinking about. But I use a lot of a uh, variety of media. So sometimes I work with messy things like gunpowder and graphite. Other times I'm making handmade paper. So I need to have um, different workspaces in the studio. For over two decades, the content of my artwork has addressed issues of social concern. It uh, primarily explores mediated experience of global conflict. And I work with both representational and abstract imagery in a variety of ways. But I'm always trying to marry form and content in visually compelling images. So much of the content of my ideas comes from current events and with the work I you know my attempt is to humanize the tragedies of war and social injustice and to combat the numbing effect of a media saturated culture. So the the coronavirus pandemic has had an impact on me and my professional life as it has on so many of us. I was scheduled to have a 20 year retrospective exhibition in Philadelphia, opening on April 2nd, and that was postponed, uh, hopefully in October, when we are talking about rescheduling it, we'll be up and running, but that's not clear right now. So there's still a lot of things wrapped up in my studio lying around on the floor and leaning against walls. Um, and so we'll take a little virtual tour. I thought that might be a good idea of the exhibition. I have a, a scaled model that um, has work curated in it and it's a 3,500 square foot gallery space. So we'll, we'll have a look at that and then I can talk about some of the pieces that would have been in the exhibition. So this is a model of the uh, exhibition space where I was um, going to be showing a number of uh, installation projects and videos and drawings. Um, it's 3,500 square feet, so it really holds a lot of work and it was a couple of years of preparing for this show. So hopefully it will, in fact, happen in the fall. So the early pieces are from uh, 2002, just right after the September 11th attacks. And for many years after that, I worked on large scale graphite and gunpowder drawings related to the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Images were mostly derived from details of newspaper photographs. And working from the grainy images along with uh, live models, I hoped to depict the human cost of war. Um, 
as the conflicts continued and the casualties grew, I began a project of counting the, the estimated 130,000 fatalities. So using wet gunpowder and vintage gauze bandages, I made fingerprints on yards of fabric to mark the lost lives. And this, this was the first of several installation projects that attempted to quantify an abstraction of large numbers. So others uh, like that, one is entitled Shadow War, and that consists of 440 unique pieces. And those, that number is counting the uh, United States clandestine drone strikes in Pakistan since uh, 2004. Another large project, which um, was partially funded by a Kickstarter campaign, attempted to capture the magnitude of a cache of 190,000 US weapons that were lost in Iraq. And so with, my, with these individually printed inventory cards that are hung and then dispersed to viewers, I try to, I guess I try to understand the way that something of this quantity can be managed and, and controlled. This work is, is kind of difficult uh, subject matter and, and so part of my reading and research about you know, wh you know what can we do to think about a more peaceful way of going about living as, as human beings and one thing I came upon that was pretty fr profound uh, was the idea of women's education and how their contributions to, especially, you know, difficult uh, places in the world could be of help. So in 2012, while I was at the um, beginning as a scholar at the Women's Studies Research Center, I began working with women in Afghanistan on a several year project. And they made some work for me, and I paid them a small wage. And it culminated in four large built structures that I've been exhibiting. And uh, the structures are adorned with materials that have come from my, my Afghan partners. And um, things that my uh, studio assistants and my husband have helped with, including a uh, hand-embroidered uh, dari language sam sampler and a video projection and other um, materials uh, that speak to the importance of women's education. So that was my first collaborative experience and then I've been making some more longer videos with my, my husband who is a, a video producer. And the first of those um, was a project I did with a woman who was at the Heller School at Brandeis um, and had managed to leave Syria with her husband and young child and um, was trying to uh, get a, a, a seeking asylum in the United States. So her story inspired a series of monoprint collages that I did in 2016 and a 50 minute video that Rick and I made together. And that video tells her story in her own words and was shown uh, in its complete 50 minute uh, version at the Human Rights Institute Gallery at Kane University in 2018. I also, in 2018, made a pastel and graphite drawing of Lena with an aerial view of Aleppo behind her. And this drawing won an award from the Harvard Law, Law School's Negotiation and Mediation Clinical Program, and a reproduction of it is installed there now. So with more recent work, my attention has turned to issues of concern here at home, challenges to the Constitution, to civil discourse, partisan, 
politics and fake news. Um, so working again across media, I've been examining the, you know, the current significant challenges to our democracy. So I began working with woven paper two years ago, uh, incorporating words of the US Constitution and Declaration of Independence with news articles about current political and social justice issues that appear contrary to these documents. So one of my most recent finished pieces, uh, which is hanging in tears behind me, um, was meant to be uh, installed in Philadelphia. And it, when it's hung the way it should be, it'll be um, more linear installation with overlapping uh, panes. And this um, directly confronts the politics of immigration. So I, I made it by shredding news articles about migrants, deportations, U.S. refugee camps, and family separation at the border. And I made eight and a half by 11 sheets with uh, the paper pulp. And they hang together, creating a kind of fragile barrier that's easily penetrated, un unlike the complexity of uh, the conditions they refer to. So the last piece uh, I'll mention, uh, and it was to premiere as well in the Drexel show um, in Philadelphia is a 20 minute, 20 second video animation created again in collaboration with my husband, Rick. Uh, it's derived from my reading of the full Mueller report, which I felt compelled to do. And while I was reading and highlighting, um, I decided to pull out uh, pieces of information and the redacted elements. And those bits, along with names mentioned in the report, sort of move in and out and flow across uh, this background of the 448 pages of the report. So I thought I'd show you a short clip of that piece um, so you have an idea of, of what I'm talking about. who chose those words carefully and the work speaks for itself. So that pretty much takes you through the virtual exhibition. Since we have been in isolation and after the show was put on hold, my creative energy was a bit depleted. So um, and it was hard for me to get back into the studio. So to keep myself engaged, I began a sketchbook, a daily sketchbook that is chronicling this epidemic. And um, it's helped me get back to new studio projects. So I just began working again with woven paper and I'm using um, 
a template for, for face masks and creating pieces that um, are derived from the never ending stream of pandemic information and some of the disturbing response and incompetent leadership that we've been seeing during this uh, worldwide crisis. So thank you very much for coming and I'll be happy to answer any questions or listen to your feedback on the Facebook Live section that will follow this, um, this program. Thank you very much.